Hello once more, Cougar Academy Algebra 2, and welcome to Lesson 5.2. Um, this time around, what are complex numbers and how do you perform operations with them? Complex numbers, um, they are something new here, and they're going to involve what we recall, or what we call the imaginary number i. What an imaginary number. So imaginary number, ah, imagination, imaginary. The imaginary number um, is i in mathematics. We do a little cursive i. What that does, or what, it, what it's used for, and it has a bad name, it really does, it is, there are applications for it. Nothing we'll probably get into, but if you want to do some crazy physics and stuff like that, then you would involve the imaginary number. Um, what it does, though, is helps us with square roots of 36. If you type in your square root of negative 36, specifically, sorry, so of square root of negative 36, you're going to see it tells you there's a non-real answer. It doesn't say there's not an answer, it just says it's non-real. Um, so our imaginary number i um, is a non-real number, but um, it helps us solve this. And really, it is this easy, guys. So the imaginary number is actually the square root of negative 1. Okay, um, the square root of negative 1, we say, is i. So that's a big thing um, to notice. Um, what that means, so if we look at number 1, um, if we think of the square root of 36 as the square root of negative 1, whoops, sorry, think of it this way, and the square root of 36, because isn't 36 negative 1 times 36, um, what we can do then is, well, the negative 1 is just going to be our new i. Whoop. So that's this part. And the other part, um, square root of 36, we know the square root of 36, that's 6. And when you have two parts like this, um, we call that an imaginary number. We just write it as 6i with the real number part first. Okay? So the big takeaway is when you see a negative, just write i. So negative square roots, negative in a square root. Just write i and get rid of the negative. Okay, so another just quick example. So here's how easy these are. Right off the bat, I see that negative. Okay, all I need to do is write i outside the square root. Boom, and get rid of the negative. And then think about square roots of 150 um, that go into, or perfect squares that go into 150. So the whole trick from before. Um, second, or if you go to y equals, and 150 divided by x. Uh, looking like, I'm guessing it's going to be a 25 here. 25 and 6, yep. 25 times 6. i is out front, and 25 just becomes 5 roots of 6. We have i. We want to write it properly, 5 imaginary roots of 6. Boom, 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 boom. Negative square root right out front as an I. Call it a day. Now, we can do other things with them. Um, we can add them. We can subtract them. And really, treat it like a variable. Um, treat it as though it was X or Y or anything. Um, so really, all we're doing in this particular problem, and let me mix it up here. Let me say this is actually 3I, okay? Um, so what we can do in this case is we can add the regular parts. So like 4 and negative 2 is negative 6. And we can, we can imagine. We can add the imaginary parts. So 1i plus 3i is 4i. And that is what you'd be left with there. So you can, Im you can just add, subtract, imaginary, non-imaginary um, parts. Um, for something like 4, subtraction, um, just be careful, you would want to distribute negative. So this is plus 7 plus 7i. And now you're just adding the like terms, 8 and 7. So I have negative 1 imaginary things. Um, 7 plus 7 is 14, um, and that's how we write it. Typically, you want the regular number first, and then you want imaginary stuff after. Okay.
Um, so adding, subtracting, treat it like a variable. Um, where it gets more interesting is when we're multiplying complex numbers. Okay, so similarly, how the square root of negative 1 is i, if you square i, that's equal to negative 1. Multiplying is going to use this little property. So you're going to again treat it like a variable. We're going to distribute. 6 times 8 is, oh my gosh, one of those days. But it's okay showing you to use your calculator. Uh, 48, yes. 48 and i. Okay, now 6 times negative 7 is negative 42. i times i, and I like to put it in parentheses, is i squared. Okay, remember i, i, i squared. Now here is the trick. We can exchange i squareds for negative 1. Okay, so 48 i minus 42, and it's going to be multiplied by a negative 1. So we're multiplying here. Um, so 48i minus, actually plus 42, negative 42 times negative 1. And then if you just want to rearrange it so it is properly written, that would be wonderful. Okay, so i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. Okay, so another multiplication example here for number 6. Um, good old FOIL is back. So um, a lot of the properties still apply. So we're just going to remember i squared, if we see that, um, is negative 1. Okay, so our first is negative 8 times 8, which is negative 64. Our outers is negative 8 times um, 8i. So negative 64 just a regular i. Um, inners is positive 64i. And our lasts are positive 64i squared. Okay, um, so adding like terms. Ah, oh, the neat thing here, let's see, negative 64 and positive 64, those are gone. That won't always happen, but in this case, it does. So I have negative 64, okay, um, plus, 64, replace the i squared with negative 1. Um, and again, you're multiplying these. So negative 64 minus 64, and that comes out to be negative 128. Okay, so a whole bunch of magic happens with that one. Be careful with the negatives and everything. Students have a tendency to want to add here. You're multiplying, not adding. Okay, okay, so really just treat i like a variable and swap it if it's i squared. Um, one of the most challenging things with dividing complex numbers is we don't like imaginary things in the basement. Um, we don't want imaginary numbers in the denominator. Um, so dividing complex numbers, no imaginary denominators. Um, what we do to get rid of that is we're going to multiply by something we call the conjugate. Um, the conjugate, and we did some of this with square roots, or you should have in the past, the conjugate deals with negative 5 plus 4i. What we're going to do is multiply it by almost the same thing, negative 5, only minus 4i. Minus 4i. So that's what we refer to as the conjugate. The same thing as this denominator, only the signs are different. For example, let me just write down some conjugates. Um, so negative 2 um, plus i, its conjugate is negative 2 minus i. Um, 4 minus 6i, its conjugate is 4 plus 6i. Um, 3 minus i, its conjugate is 3 plus i. So those are conjugates and examples. If you have one, you just multiply by the other. Here's what happens. 6i, um, so you're going to have to distribute, is negative 30i um, times uh, negative 4i, so that is 24 minus 24 and i squared. 
our denominator, we have some FOIL to do, but it's not too bad. So negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 25, uh, positive 25. Um, negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20i. The insides are negative 20i, and the lasts are negative 16i squared. And then some things happen. Um, so first off, we can look at the top, negative 30i minus 24 times negative 1, because I replaced the i squared. The denominator, some things happen. Our i's are going to cancel because one's positive, one's negative. So I have 25 minus 16 times negative 1. Once again, replace your i squareds. And then, so really, this is negative 24 times negative 1 is positive 24 minus 30i all over um, 25 plus 16, which comes out to be 24 minus 30i all over 25 plus 16, uh, 41, I believe. Yep. And that's it there. So that is your final answer, no imaginary things in the denominator. We do like to get rid of those, okay? Um, another example for eight. So again, we're gonna start by multiplying by the conjugate. The conjugate, you wanna take a guess? You can write it down now. Negative eight minus four i. The negative in front of the eight does not change. The only thing is this sign here. Foil the numerator, foil the denominator. Eight um, plus four i minus 56, I believe, 8 times 7, and minus 28 i squared, don't forget i squared, um, all over uh, 64, um, plus 32i, minus 32i, um, minus 16 i squared and then some magic starts to happen so 8 let's see here the i's minus 52 i minus 28 i squared which is negative 1 okay and feel free to skip any of these steps as you get comfortable 32's are going to cancel minus 16 times negative 1 um, so 8 Negative 28 times negative 1 is plus, so plus 28 minus 52i all over, same thing here, 64 plus 16. Let's simplify that sum, 28 plus 8, uh, 36, minus 52i all over, 64 plus 16. 80. And this is great. Um, one thing we can do is if all of these share factors, we can divide. Um, so they all share factors um, at least of 2. Uh, 36 divided by 2. I don't know if we could still divide that more. So 18, 80 divided by 2, 40. I think they all share factors of 4. Let's see, 52 divided by 4. Yep, so we'll divide everything by 4. We can just reduce everything by 4, um, making it 9 minus 13i all over 80 divided by 4 is 20. Um, <clears throat> so if they all divide, you can simplify it further, um, and that's what that result would be. Okay. The last thing for this particular topic is now we can solve equations by taking square roots um, specifically with negatives. So um, again it's very similar to last chapters or the last lesson 
we want to get n by itself, so we're going to subtract 7, um, 18, minus 7, negative 25. Um, for n squared, okay, we're going to divide each side by 4. So n squared is equal to negative 25 over 4. And here's the little thing now, when we take the square root, first off, always remember it's plus or minus. And now that we have a negative inside the square root, um, we can just write that outside and do i roots of 25 over 4. And then just think, well, 25 over 4, the square root of that is 5 over 2. So our answer is plus or minus 5 halves i. Okay, so a little bit of everything thrown into that problem so far. Big thing, again, the square roots of negatives are i. Okay, um, last example was solving. You get a squared by itself. Add 7 to each side. So negative 18 plus 7. is negative 11 equals 3a squared and divide by 3 um, so a squared <clears throat> is equal to um, negative 11 over 3 square root each side so a is equal to plus or minus don't forget it square root of 11 thirds i is going to come out front because I already know when you take the square root it's going to be out there um, 11 thirds this would be okay um, if you recall rationalizing denominators. Um, technically, you would want to rewrite this, so I'll accept this answer. Um, a is equal to plus or minus i um, root of 11 over root of 3. You'd have to multiply root of 3 over root of 3. 3 over 3. Okay, um, but I'll accept this answer. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you check your work on a website or something else, you may see it differently, um, but I'll accept that there. So I am following your work on these. I do want to see your work <clears throat> through a lot of these problems. Um, don't fret if you struggle with a few of the ideas. Uh, multiplying and dividing, adding, subtracting, complex numbers. Great job, guys. Good stuff.